You know, sometimes you just hear a Bible verse or a phrase in Scripture and it's so memorable to you, you don't ever forget it. I mean, it's in there. You just need to hear it only one time. I can think of some Scriptures that were that way for me and still are. I read them for the first time a half a century ago and they're just burned into my brain. I'm going to give you one right now that I hope will have the same effect on you that it'll just be branded into your spirit. It's what I call the 10-4 passage. Remember back in old CB days? Some of you are thinking, what's a CB? 10-4, good buddy. Just go look it up. It's in Ezra, the book of Ezra, chapter 10 and verse 4. And it goes like this. We're behind you, so get up and get it done. I call it the get her done text. That passage means a great deal to me and I hope it does to you too. And here's why. Frankly because I consider it one of the most pertinent passages for ministry and church life that can be found anywhere in the Bible. Ezra chapter 10 and verse 4. Now, to appreciate what's going on, you have to understand the context. The setting you can read about in Ezra chapter 9, its entirety, and chapter 10, its entirety. And the essence of it is, is the leader of God's people in that place at that time, his name is Ezra, has an extremely difficult task to do. It absolutely is heartrending to him. When he learns of the problem, he tears his clothes. He rips hair out of his head. He tears part of his beard out. He sits down in grief and virtually on the edge of despair. He sits there for a really long time. Finally, he brings himself to the point where he can try to talk to God about it. And so he begins to pray begins to pray right out loud. There's other people there that start gathering and collecting and, and hearing this, and they've been already seeing how he's been acting. We're told something of what Ezra prays. You can read about that in chapter 9, verse 6 through 15. But there's a man by the name of Shechaniah that comes on the scene. He apparently is a part of this crowd. He too is one of the leaders, you might say, among a portion of God's people. And he's seen Ezra's broken heart. He knows the difficult task that must be done. He's overheard this prayer, probably joined right in there with him in his own heart. And what Shechaniah does is extremely important. I see it as pivotal to this whole problem. He comes up to Ezra and he says, you know what has to be done. I want you to know that you have my support and these people right here with me. You have their support too. Now let me see you get up and go to it. Now understand what's going on. Shechaniah is not rebuking Ezra, quite the opposite. He's come alongside a man who's deeply hurting. He sees this man's needs clearly and accurately. And he joins this man in this prayer and in this feeling, and then helps him do what has to be done to take the next step. We've all been there. We've had something that was extremely difficult for us to face. And quite frankly, it would have been very easy for us to put it off or simply never get around to doing it. We might have reasoned ourselves into saying, well, it would be better to do nothing than to do something and maybe do the wrong thing, so I just won't do anything at all and to remain frozen. Shechaniah has the real wisdom here. He sees a man that needs the encouragement of others. And so he steps up 
and becomes the embodiment of that encouragement and you might say points his attention, Ezra's attention, to the fact that he's not alone. And it's not just him and Shechaniah. There are many others too. Can I speak really frankly here? <laughs> I've got you. I'm going to speak frankly anyway. We live in a world that seems to live with unhealthy speech. The world that I live in, that I hear and witness all the time, is precisely the opposite of the way the Apostle Paul spoke for Christians to be in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29. He said, let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Nothing that isn't healthy come out of your mouth. That in itself is a sermon. But Paul doesn't stop there. The Spirit moves him and his Spirit working with the Holy Spirit builds on the sentence. Here's what not to do. Let anything unhealthy come out of your mouth. But only what is constructive, that is what will build up others as you are aware of their needs. Wow. See, we're told not only what not to do, but we're told what to do. We see people in their needs. We see the needs that people have. And then we seek to be a positive, constructive force in those needs. We come alongside those people so that what they hear us say, what they listen to us say, which is the rest of this sentence there in Ephesians 4 and verse 29, does them real good. It fortifies them to go forward and not to remain frozen. It enables them to put the past in proper perspective and to walk right into the future with our Father God. And they know that they're not alone in doing so because you're there expressing constructive words of encouragement to do them. That's exactly what Ezra experienced from Shechaniah in Ezra chapter 10. We all need some Shechaniahs in our life. We all face some incredibly difficult choices and all the more some very important and challenging follow-through all the time. I'm sure that our particular difficulty won't be the same one that Ezra faced but that's beside the point. We're talking about how Ezra was able to tackle this mountain of an issue. He did it because of good brothers of his, you might say, saying, I've got your back. I'm here with you. Let's get up. I want to see you get her done. I'm here with you for that. You know, it'd be very, very easy for us as Christians to simply become like a chameleon. Just become the same world, the same color as the world all around us. And just do like what we see and hear all the others in this world do. And what I see and hear a lot of people do these days is criticize and criticize and criticize. Maybe it's politicians that's in their sights. Maybe it's that stranger they don't even know, or their next door neighbor. Maybe they're airing out about a family member or family members. The list goes on and on. Seemingly anybody is a good target. It's time for us to remember the ways of the Spirit, and if necessary, crucify our own. We need lips that are sealed to anything that is unhealthy and wide open deliberately to give encouragement. We need to have the courage to come alongside people who are in the midst of great difficulties with big needs and to voice what they need to hear. A fool can give criticism and complain and a bunch of belly aching. But it takes real wisdom from God to say, I too will stand with you. I'm here with you. I've got your back. You're not alone. Let's go make this difficult work happen.
Let's get her done. 10 forward, good buddy. Go and be this way by the Spirit of God. Others will be blessed because of it. And God will remember you for it. Grace and peace be with all of us and out of our mouths.